Hey everybody, so I'm doing an update video to share my progress that I've been doing. Uh, this here is basically my uh, setup here. It's my uh, Celestron EVX mount with my Explorer Scientific AR102 doublet. And it's basically a achromatic refractor. And uh, basically the only downfall to this refractor is, is that it suffers from chromatic aberration, which is basically a uh, bluish purplish halo around the stars and planets whenever you're looking at them and taking pictures of them uh, but that can be corrected with a filter that I plan to get uh, I've heard you can do it in post processing but I don't know if I'll want to do that just yet um, but anyways I started out with a, uh, a Orion Star Seeker 4 go to mount with my Celestron Power Seeker ADEQ then I upgraded to a uh, Celestron Next Star 5SC which they're both alt azimuth mounts and they really can't do uh, anything over about 10 seconds in exposure and the gears on them and the way the mount works it just really is a hassle uh, to combat the earth rotation when you're doing longer exposures so I'm going to show you guys uh, a before picture that I was doing uh, with my uh, setup and uh, I want to mention I did astro mod my DSLR so you'll see some really good uh, quality uh, images uh, shortly uh, I did a self astro mod myself, and uh, yeah. So um, here is the uh, before picture. This is a 15 second exposure uh, at ISO 1600 of the Hercules Globular Cluster. Uh, this was done on an alt azimuth mount, and you can see the quality is not so great at all uh, with with this. And um, yeah, so. Uh, the next picture that I have coming up is of the Hercules Globular Cluster. Uh, this right here is the Hercules Globular Cluster with a longer exposure this time. And uh, you can see the quality is a lot better with the uh, Celestron AVX mount. I'm able to take a longer exposure and get more of the photons that need to uh, bring out the quality in it. And this here is the Dumbbell Nebula. And you can see that the quality in the colors is just amazing and if I didn't astro mod my DSLR it wouldn't look this way because the IR the infrared cut filter uh, basically you know eliminates a lot of color and and, and the reds and and the uh, nebulas and stuff so if my DSLR wouldn't have been astro modded I wouldn't have been able to get the quality like that now I've been processing my uh, my images now and Pix Insight, which I got to buy Pix Insight here in a couple of months. Uh, it's about $260 software, um, but well worth the money if you're going to be doing astrophotography, that's for sure. Um, I also use Backyard EOS, which is basically a software that allows me to control my DSLR from USB. So all the features that my DSLR offers, Backyard EOS can uh, you know control that. I can control the ISO settings. I can uh, set a number of exposures that I want to do. So say I wanted to do eh, 15 pictures at, uh, ice, at about uh, you know uh, 60 seconds long. Um, I could just set it in the in the uh, backyard EOS and then click the button on backyard EOS and it'll start going a countdown and start snapping pictures. Um, and then uh, you can you can also do uh, your uh, lights, you can do your dark frames, you can do your flat frames, you can do your bias frames. And these are all frames that help. Uh, the dark frames are used to uh, basically um, uh, make the, the image darker. And the flat frames are, um, I think, to get the noise down. Uh, so if you're doing a, uh, a long exposure to the pixels, um, they tend to uh, show in your images, so they uh, remove those with the uh, when you do stacking. So, anyways, long story short, that's that's basically what it does. Um, and uh, I've been having some pretty good luck uh, with this setup so far. It's basically unguided still. Um, I don't do I don't really use my polar scope either. I basically just set up the mount, I uh, level it. And then uh, I do my two star alignment, which I use two stars in the uh, the west sky normally uh, around this time of year, which is July. Uh, in the east coast, I use Arcturus, and I'll try to use Spica 
And uh, those are my two stars that I'll try to use unless, unless it's a little later. Um, and then I'll use two calibrated stars in the east sky. Um, I've been using uh, Denib, I think it is. And, uh, or is it Doobie? I think it's Doobie. I've been using Doobie and um, Altera. And funny thing is, is I've actually used Altera as my polar alignment star, which is funny because uh, it says you're not supposed to use any st any stars in the uh, the horizon or near the uh, or near zenith or in the east or west sky. But for some reason, I've gotten away with that. And uh, I'll show you a picture here, right here. Uh, you can see right here, this is a a perfect polar alignment uh, that I that I've achieved. Uh, with the AVX mount. Um, one thing I want to mention is, is I've been making it hard on myself. Uh, actually, uh, you're better off using a rectical uh, eyepiece when it has a crosshair in it. That way, uh, you don't have to uh, struggle trying to find the center of the eyepiece to put the star in. So when you're adjusting the alt azimuth knobs and the uh, altitude knob, trying to get the star centered when you're doing your, your polar alignment, um, it would make it a lot uh, easier on yourself. One thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is, is I started up an astrophotography blog for astronomy, and it's just stargazing.com. It's in the description below. Also, I started up a Instagram page uh, dedicated to astronomy and astrophotography, so you're, if you're ever curious to know what I'm up to or what's the latest stuff I've been doing, uh, feel free to check out my blog or my Instagram page for you know, uh, whatever I've, whatever I've been doing, whether it's an unboxing of astronomy equipment or whether it's a new picture or new equipment. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching guys. Wish you guys clear skies. If you haven't become a subscriber yet, become a subscriber today.